Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is time for a Q&A session. We may do an addendum to this one. It's not long since we asked for questions, uh, asking our patrons and channel members. Uh, thank you very much for your continued support in you know what is difficult very times. Very difficult times. Yeah. So uh, you have the questions starting on Patreon. I do indeed. And starting with Simon Sylvester, who asks, do you dream about windscreen wipers? I probably do. I'm that sad. You do. Yeah. I'm sure we've had a discussion. Um, didn't you have a dream where somebody's windscreen wipers were wrong or broken or something? I think it was Betty, which is the ultimate offence. Yeah, I think I did have some sort of nightmare regarding wipers fairly yeah. recently. Yeah. So, yeah, slightly obsessed with them. Can't help it. Very. Truckosaurus, given no time or budget limitations, where would you road trip to? Oh, anywhere. Yeah, I think we just want to go, yeah. don't we, when we can. There's nowhere in particular, I just like going to new places. So uh, the more places, the better. Never been to America, would like to do that. Same. Uh, I haven't been to Scandinavia for years. I'd love to would go like there. Would like to do that. You've never been to Scotland, so even no, locally, <laughs> more locally, it's still a long way away. Yes. But that would be a nice one to do. Yeah, definitely. There's loads. We just want to, we just want to go once. Yeah. You know, the hublets are grown up and whatnot. I think we're just going to take on the nomadic existence, aren't we? That's, that's my hope. Oh, yes. is that Tim of Cambrian Classics? Hi, Tim of Cambrian Classics. Of course, he didn't recognise us because we're hiding oh, in we're the... Oh, incognito. <laughs> incognito in the Fiat. Our last <laughs> day with the Fiat. So, Adrian McGrow. Hi, Adrian. Hello in Australia, then. I think you recently had some merch. He remember. has. Yes, yes. Um, recently, I've sold an SR20 rear-wheel drive version of the Primera engine that I'd stored away for many years. To my amazement, the new owner is fitting it into a standard eight. Hypothetically, which member of the fleet would you fit a completely random combustion engine to for efficiency, reliability, power, or even less power? Because of course, power less is more. Yeah. Oh Mer yeah, I, I, think, I think I'd put a Perkins Prima in Betty. No, joking, I would not do that. Uh, realistically, I don't know. Mini Hubnut's the one that's obsessed with random engines. Yeah, he wanted to put a Subaru <laughs> engine and running gear in the altar. Yeah. Which would have been hilarious, but so there wasn't any structure left to weld anything to. No, no. Um, but yeah, I don't know really. I, I do like putting V8s in places they shouldn't be. But I don't think there's anything on the fleet at the moment I'd want to put a V8 in. Even Betty, I love her Intex six cylinder engine. Mm. So you wouldn't go for the Barra? Oh, yes. see that, I think a, a Barra AU would be quite the sleeper. That's the engine that came in with the next Falcon, which can tune to over a thousand horsepower on stock internals. So that would be exciting, I must admit. But yeah. I, would I it not be slightly terrifying? With oh yeah, Betty? absolutely. Yeah. You, you would have to do a lot of work steering and suspension because yes. uh, she's a bit of a yeah. wobble box. And he also says, Merry Christmas to the Hubnut family. Stay safe and warm. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Nadali Cowen. Yeah, I bet um, it's a lot warmer having Christmas in Australia. I think he was bragging about it the other day. Yeah. I think he was. <laughs> um, Daniel Potter, if you were to take one of your fleet on the ultimate road trip, which one would you take? Gosh, everybody's mind is yeah. about traveling because it's every, bloody cold. Well, everyone's also missing the road trips, I think, because yeah, it's yeah. a long time since I did a big one. Um, so if you were to take one of your fleet, I think Daniel's in Northern Ireland, if memory serves. Oh, okay. If you were to take one of your fleet on the ultimate road trip, which one would you take and where would your would it, where would the destination be? Well, this is difficult because thinking back to America again, on the one hand, I think it'd be quite fun to do America in the 2CV, but I remember from doing New Zealand thinking, you know, I'd harbour the dream of taking Ellie to New Zealand and doing a 2CV road trip, but the, the driving is ill-suited to 2CVs. Bombing around Europe, especially around the mountains in a 2CV, hilarious fun, but when you've just got huge distance to cover, Betty's the one, really. And the idea of driving Betty around America, where no one would have a clue what she is, <laughs> and uh, the fuel prices are a lot lower, that's very appealing. Yeah, yeah, Betty's a, she's a good mile chugger, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and she's um, already done a fair bit of globe trotting. Yeah, she has, she So, has. yeah, a bit more wouldn't hurt, maybe. Take it to, oh, maybe you could take it to each continent. Ooh. Could go across Europe and into Asia and whatnot. Yeah. That would be cool. Oh, can you imagine her against little cake cars? Anyway, I digress. Yes. <laughs> um, Gordon Prentice, if you went on a road trip to Paris, which one of the Citroëns would you take? Oh, I mean, we bought Giselle to specifically go to, to go to a GSA and GS anniversary event mm -hmm. in Paris. And of course, lockdown happened and that never happened. So I do still harbour that dream. Ellie's been to Paris, but only 
on the outskirts, um, not coming off the motorway anymore into Paris than that, because frankly, driving around Paris is just absolutely horrible. So, uh, yeah. Giselle uh, would, would, look would be nice to tick that box and actually yeah. take Giselle on the trip she was bought for. And go to the Citroen Museums variously. Yeah. And she does eat up the miles nicely, so. She is weirdly comfortable, Giselle. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite happily traveling, Giselle. Um, so, Paige Greer. So, what's the Fiat 500 cost to operate so far? It was a month lease first, was it not? So, yes, it is a month lease. Yeah, but we were gifted that lease. Yes. Uh, and I, I reckon I've probably put maybe 30 or 40 pounds worth of electricity in this car myself. Yeah, where just. I've had, I had to yeah. use chargers that aren't included in the on two package. Yeah, there's been a couple of occasions where just. Oh. I did have to spend some money on screen wash. <gasps> and apparently I didn't put enough in because it's frozen blooming solid. Well, you said you put a litre in, didn't you? Yeah. But um, otherwise, I mean, £40, bearing in mind the motoring we've done in this thing. Yeah. But that's not the reality for this because you would be paying for the subscription otherwise. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've done uh, over 1,000 miles in this car. Mm -hmm in a month so I don't think that's bad going and it's been lovely because then you do discover the downsides like there is no engine bay heat to thaw out the screen wash so the screen wash is frozen solid and won't unfreeze that's irritating yeah because there's nothing to warm it yeah that's a weird thing to get head round isn't it because yeah. in a combustion engine oh would, yeah there's so much defrost. waste heat but that waste heat is actually useful yes so just in Mepham, overall, do you prefer automatic or manual cars? And do you have issues jumping between the two? No, I don't have issues because I'm kind of used to it. Very early days, uh, I remember I'd um, done a day at Goodwood Revival. We'd driven down from Peterborough, done a day at the show, uh, and then we were leaving and we're in the queue to go out. And I accidentally went for the clutch in this automatic Saab 95 and uh, almost launched me and my passenger through the windscreen. Oops. Thankfully, we were only at car park speeds, but it was still one heck of a, a bit shot. Bit hairy. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, pretty much the only time that's happened, um, because I always have cars with very different controls. It's quite easy jumping between yeah, all of yeah, them. They're all Occasionally, I have wiper stalk issues because Betty's got them the wrong way round for the continent. Uh, the, the far more sensible indicators right, and occasionally that's an issue, but not very often. A, a preference? I'm not sure I have one. I like things about automatics, I like things about manuals. Both have their downsides as well. But uh, when you're driving an electric like this, you're like, this is kind of, maybe this is actually perfect in terms of transmission. Can you tell someone doesn't want to let this go? Yeah, <laughs> it's a one speed automatic. And it's not like I'm even using two pedals. I basically never touch the brake pedal at all. So I'm in one pedal mode. And I really like that. Yeah, we are going to do the last overview of our experience with this car. Yeah. Um, that'll be in another video. It will. Uh, and Justin also says, Merry Christmas to the Hubduck family. Now, Dolly Cowan, to you too. And that brings us to the end of the Patreon questions. Okay, we should take a short break and come back with the so YouTube channel So thank you very members. much for all your questions and thank for you. all your continued support in what is challenging times. Just a quick break as we're driving along. Um, this is the, uh, the Fiat. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot. We've got the moon just visible up there and the snow-capped mountains in the haze of the distance. I hope you can make that out. You're on quite a wide angle, so it's quite hard to tell. As you can see, the road is fairly quiet at the moment, but uh, I'm also going to take the moment to um, soak the windscreen because the screen wash uh, obviously didn't get the concentration quite right. It's completely solid, which is less than ideal. So, uh, manual screen wash mode it is right onwards with the uh, youtube channel members asking their questions yes um as you might notice it's still absolutely frozen around here it is very very cold oh you're still muted sorry just give your button the press you should be back now he did it on purpose <laughs> so the first question comes from sam thomas why don't you scrap that car the shemi Ooh. that would be because it's my car um, also, when you're going to do the next meetup? Uh, oh, yeah, we haven't had a good year for meetups. Yeah, we? next year we're gonna we're gonna do better because 
uh, we've got a big plan for when the Hublets are away to do a big bomb tour, aren't we? Yeah, um, but we yeah. need to really think about the logistics for that. So, same ongoing issues. If anybody can think of any um, venues, it needs to have a lot of space um, and toilets and food, ideally. Yeah, numbers are difficult to predict because we've had meetings that are anywhere between 50 and 200 cars. So, yeah. or 50 and 200 people. Yeah. I think. No, I get the Chevy thing is mad, but it is my car and I just love her every time I go in that unit. We've yeah, got... uh, well, we are determined to yes. get that car done. Absolutely, absolutely. She's fighting us all the way, as you've seen. All the way. <laughs> um, I love your videos. Keep up the good work. What are you going to do with the cars? Whew. Well, generally, uh, well, Tuck, we, we want to get some body improvements on Tuck. Yeah. Um, Ellie is just a, Ellie is a constant project. There is no ending Project Ellie. There is always work to be done. Uh, Giselle needs work. We know this. Yeah, he has a few little jobs she needs sorting uh, out. Shemi ongoing. Yeah. Myrtle is just kind of sat at the moment. Yeah, it just doesn't feel worth getting Myrtle out because the weather's horrible. Betty's likely to have some big work next year, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, suspension, suspension refresh is yeah. desperately needed on Betty. Um, Bella, touch wood, is okay at the moment. Yeah. Has she stopped what? doing that sort of charge? No, thing no, she's still do? not running 100% right. Okay, so we might that. have to have a little look at that. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on with the cars at yeah. the moment, isn't it? Yeah, plenty keeping us busy. And then, of course, there's Bob and all the Bob stuff as well. Yes, yeah, Bob. Um, but Bob, some of the Bob is outside of our hands because the health check needs to be somebody qualified to do that. Yeah. Um, so, why don't you take Myrtle out and leave her outside so you have more room? Because she'd dissolve. She would, bless her. This is the thing, is that we live in Wales, rust is a problem. We have cars that like to rust a lot. Mm. <laughs> and we haven't got enough room at home to keep loads of cars there. We're, we're taking the mickey at the moment. We're having to yeah, borrow space from neighbours. We've had to filter down already. We, this which week. works at this time of year, but um, in the summer months there just isn't space. So yeah, we, we need to try and sort things out. And no incomers at no. the moment. Filtering down the fleet has helped a lot, I think, with. Yeah, it's yeah. very easy when you're a YouTuber to just say, oh, well, I can justify this. It'd be great for views. And uh, here's another car. People love collection capers. They love new cars. But Ooh. unless you're also getting rid of them, it becomes a bit of a problem. And you end up with more cars than you have space for or time, realistically. Oh, and we forgot one. And I'm going to be a bit vague on this one. But Miss Daisy, Oh yeah. there may be a little collaboration. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've got some plans for Miss Daisy, yeah. this is smart and the Exciting so. collaboration. Yeah, so let's see what happens there. So... In a completely unrelated um, subject, if you go and check out Wildland Restorations, do give them a they're subscribe. They're good people. They're good, good people. people. <laughs> um, Griff Lane, Merry Christmas to you all. Merry do you Christmas. have any... No, darling, shall I win? Do you have any plans for 100k subs? Oh, a little smart. No, that isn't it. That's just a little smart going back. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, you gave it away, Ian. Worryingly not. I've had a few thoughts. I've tried putting a few feelers out to try and get stuff lined up, but it hasn't quite come to pass yet. I, and, uh, you know, we're now mid-December. And about two and a half thousand oh, away. Yeah, we're, and we're putting on 1,500 subs a month at the moment. So uh, that's getting close. I yes. need to get something sorted out. Do you know so what watch this space. I think we should go and track down that little landmaster. I'm not sure that's fitting for... Okay, I mean, it's not dramatic. I think we should do that anyway. Yeah, we yeah. have a rare conversion E4x4 yeah. near us, we discovered the other day. So, we're being vague about it, because you don't want to say where vehicles are. But if you are that person, because you will know you've got that vehicle and you live near us. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, your thoughts on the Mondeo ST220 Estate, please. Uh, I think that's a great car. Well, it's the SG220 is the V6, isn't it? Griff is loving his. Mm, mm -hmm. Excellent. Is he the one who we told him to buy that? He was asking around on Twitter and uh, uh, myself, I think JM. If he was asking some... on Twitter about buying a car, you will have said yes, because yeah. nobody ever says don't buy it on, yeah. on there. It's a very dangerous but yeah, place. Yeah, V6 load logo, why not? Especially uh, now fuel prices are creeping down a little says loving mine at the moment even though i've managed to shear a front coil spring on a speed bump Oish. 
All the best for you and your family. All the best to you too as well, Griff. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Cauliflower McPug says, oh, oh, this is a contentious one. Merry Christmas to you, Miss Hubner and the Hublets. Hello. And Darling Shawen. My question is, which of your current fleet is your least favourite? Oh. Be brave. Oh. Least favourite? Now, if you'd have asked a few months ago, this would have been all right, but... Yeah. Um, that's really difficult. Because all of them... And I think I can accurately say this. If I get in them to drive somewhere, they put a smile on my face. That's why they're on the fleet. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Which one do I like least? It's, it's probably going to be Giselle, isn't it? Just because of the pure love-hate. Yeah, you I don't she... have a love-hate relationship with any other car on the fleet, I don't think. And you haven't driven her for a while, so she falls down the rank then, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah, and then I go for a drive yes. and I'm just like, oh, this is marvellous. <laughs> what am I on about? So, yeah. It's more frustration that I haven't got the skills to sort that car out. And there's a few niggly issues and the people who can sort her out are plumbing miles away. So, trying to actually improve her, a bit of a pain. Yeah. But I, I reckon Tim at Cambrian Classics, who we have seen on this very journey, is keen to learn a bit about Citroën. Is he? He may regret oh. this once he actually starts working on Citroën. But, you know, <laughs> it's start, like, it was that Ellie little taster, wasn't it? Yeah, and also, you know, breaking him in gently, a bit of work on the Blingo, you know, so he thinks, oh, yeah, this is straightforward, <laughs> I can do this. This is just like an MG. <laughs> and then? And then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. Well done. Uh, I think this is quite a tough one as well. Uh, so this is S Rich GTR. I think that's Susie. Okay. Yeah. Seasons greet. Uh, I recognise the avatar. Seasons greeting to one and all. Due Hello. to a bizarre and unbelievable admin er error, you have to swap one of your fleet for an electric electric vehicle of any kind from any era. Ooh. Which electric vehicle would you choose, and which member of the fleet would be swapped out to make space? Oh gosh. Well, yeah, that is a difficult one. I don't, I don't think I'd go too far back in time because I think EVs are just getting better all the time. And uh, anything pre-leaf is kind of borderline unusable, really. Would you get a milk float? Oh, no, I wouldn't get a milk float. You wouldn't get a milk float? It. It'd only be good for the merge runs and even then it'd be really slow. Yeah, but it'd be so cool, though. I'm quite taken by the MG4. Yeah, you are. You, you and that, that's the problem with this car we're in. Why would you buy one of these? when an MG4 can be had for less money and is bigger and more practical with a bigger range. You've got to really like these cute looks. So who's going? Uh, who's going? Uh, Chevy. <gasps> you don't mean that. I don't mean that. It'd probably be Miss Daisy, to be honest, because oh. I love Miss Daisy. She's a lovely little car, but she fills a slot in the fleet we don't actually have. Oh my gosh, look at this snow cap. Lovely. Mate. We can't show you. Just take our word yeah. for it. Well, you could get, get your phone out and what? video a bit of footage. Well, we we can overlay like it. Like an inception? Yeah. Okay, this is about to get weird, folks. Yeah, sorry about this. Mild distraction, but it is so very, very pretty. I don't know if it's going to get better when we get up this hill. We just dip down again. So, you can see the snow. Oh my gosh, look at this Leyland Roadrunner. Wow. There we go, folks. Bonus footage galore. Not we should do that. this more often. Yeah, this is, we just thought we'd mix it up a little bit, didn't we, from being sat in the yeah. unit. Also, it's warm in here. It is so warm. It is beautiful. Yeah, though. that's another what reason for filming day. in the car. But Glorious. we are currently averaging 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. Yeah, Eesh. as opposed to 4.6. Yeah. Hello, there's a Bilingo on top of a hill over there. <laughs> oh, it's a Bilingo Christmas card, look. Oh, they out fencing. Oh. Don't fancy that job today. Anyway, should we jump back onto yes. the questions or are we waiting for better views? Oh, hello. hello. Or it might be his farmer friends. There yeah, we go. lovely. Right. Right. Back to the questions. Ohio Pete asks. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Um, Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you and your family and the same to you and yours. Yeah. Do you know where the terms offside and nearside originated? I hear you and hear these terms on MOTs, and I guess wrong, which meant I guess wrong, which meant left and right side of the car. Uh, I don't know where the origin comes from, but it relates to where the curb is. So if your car is parked next to the curb, the near side is the side that's nearest to the curb. So in the UK, that would be the left-hand side as you're sitting in the driver's seat. And similarly, offside is this side because it's off away from the curb. 
So next we've got Matt Pink, the man of two sarnas. Yeah. Two sarnas now. Sorry, I tried washing the windscreen again. That was a mistake. I still have no screen wash. Sorry, Matt. He's just sabotaging. Do you have rear screen wash? Oh, Matt, thank you for the um, orange. Yeah, we've got rear screen Will wash. Will you stop? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the Orangina sweets, Matt. They did make it home, which I was well impressed oh, with. So delicious. They are delicious. What is your preferred demisting technique in cars without aircon? Do oh. you let the blower do the work or do you prefer a wipe with a rag? Oh, oh no. my God, that sounds like... No, 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 never wipe. <laughs> uh, or certainly not with a rag because all that tends to do is leave nasty residue and then dries and uh, affects your vision. I'm not averse. I had to do this in Bella the other day to using an actual wiper blade on the inside. If it's really bad condensation, she it just, just um, yeah, just use a wiper blade. Mm -hmm. And yes, it'll leave a bit of water down the bottom of the windscreen. That'll clear, don't worry. Okay. But generally blowers. Yeah. Yeah, so Matt has got some, um, has got two sarnas now, mm -hmm. and he is uh, following, the, the progress of that is happening over on the Fuel Power channel, isn't it? It is. Yeah, very interesting to see what's happening there. Uh, so, Bicycle Hub. Miss Hubnut once said he's a superstar. Oh, he is Who are you superstar. on about? You, you twin. Oh. <laughs> now you have nearly 100k subscribers. Do you feel famous? Do you feel like people recognize you when you're out and about? And does it make you self-conscious? To be honest, that's been happening since surprisingly early days on the channel. It's amazing how quickly that can occur, but you bump into people somewhere and they're like, oh, hello, Hubnut. Uh, so I don't think that has changed all that much in the past few years. Possibly because we don't live somewhere where there's a huge amount of population, so... No. Uh, <laughs> it's it, kind of weird where we live. Yeah, if, because if we lived more in a city, I think there'd be more chances because there's more people. Yeah, but I think most people locally to us know who we are and what we do yeah. because small village, but it's they don't say anything about it, mm. do they? It's, it's quite surreal. <laughs> it is very strange. Um, he is a superstar, but he's a superstar not because of the channel he's a superstar because of what he does for us um as a family and for me oh uh, but you also try not to let this stuff go to your head otherwise you just look like mm. a moron mm. yeah i mean you are a moron but i'm joking <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> sorry give with one hand take with the next Oh, I build you up and crush you, crush yeah, you like a bug. This is our relationship standard. This is our relationship. People tell me off for the way I sometimes <gasps> talk to you, but it's just, it's just how we are with each other. Yeah. He's lying. He's horrible to me. I'm joking. Terrible. Um, Les Palmer, hope you are all well. Which of your vehicles do you think is best at driving on snow, and which one is worst? Um, front wheel drive Citroens always tend to be awesome. Uh, in the snow and the Blingo fits in that mold quite yeah, well she's despite doing great. basically really being a Peugeot uh, been absolutely superb uh, worst is uh, it's got to be Betty yeah that was a bit hairy yesterday wasn't it yeah we only, uh, only encountered the odd bit of ice and you're just like oh unsettling mm. yeah um, powerful rear wheel drive is not what you want took the Invercar has issues in snow just because she's got a fact, wheel in the middle yeah the front wheel has nowhere mm -hmm. to go it won't go in the ruts uh, she's got the engine over the driven wheels so she's got quite good traction but there's a video if you go back where i tried drifting took and utterly failed because she just gripped oh bless her and understeered i hope you're all well no currently we have a plague house yeah we do we have a plague house it's joyous <laughs> but i'm sure we'll all be better in no time at all because we've got a big family meeting this weekend um so deep blue dreams after driving a classic military jeep would you want to ha own one far in the future? I'm not sure really, because I'm not sure what I'd actually do with it. If I could get out on the lanes and have a bit of fun with it, then yeah, I think so. But that's not always very doable. And they are very, very basic. They're good fun, but I'm not the sort who'd want to take it to shows and just let it sit there. And similarly, I don't mm -hmm. think I'd get it out on the lanes enough to feel like I could really justify it. That's why I don't currently own a 4x4. Captain Hollister, just curious which members of your fleet are the least bad on snowy or icy roads? Kind of just discussed yeah, that okay, one. Yeah, we just it's discussed that one. Bella's been surprising. I mean, we took Bob out with Bella um, and she was good as gold. She gripped. Um, Somehow. I had to use a lot of momentum to get up that icy hill. Yeah. But if we'd had to stop, we would have been stuffed because all the weight is then hanging off the front wheels. <laughs> 
we've been manually pushing Bob up a hill. Yeah. Lovely in the ice. And I know uh, there has been a bit of criticism on the channel going, well, why on earth are you driving around on summer tyres? There's a couple of reasons. One is I've had a few winters living where we do. And we've not really had no, this, this is... sort of issue. So you do get lulled into a full sense. 2017 when I lived, was the last When I lived one. up in the hills, um, up near Devil's Bridge, uh, the road for which we are approaching right now, conveniently, how's that for a segue? Mm. Uh, it was very different. It obviously gets much colder, much more snow. But even there, if you don't need to travel, you don't travel mostly. No, no. Um, no, and that's true of everybody around here. I mean, as we were driving to Cardigan and whatnot, most people had their cars parked up on laybys and but had no intention of coming out of yeah. the lanes and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, you, you fill the freezer yeah. and you stay in. Yeah, the, the schools have, have cancelled certain buses because yeah. it's... You need and to, to be just... honest, when we set off with Bob, we hadn't fully appreciated what it would be like off the gritted roads. And uh, we were worried we were actually going to get stuck. So mm. it's not something we'd look to repeat. We wouldn't oh, no, go and do that again not. and just think, ah, to hell with it, we'll be fine. We are aware of the danger of driving yeah. around on summer tyres. And again, this is a, a naivety on our part with Bob because it's our first year. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, just fall down for Rob oh, was, uh, my friends C. from Commissioner. Rob C, not a question, but a thanks for all the brilliant content and Merry Christmas to you and all the family. Uh, all the best for 2023. I think we'll probably need it. Mm. Yeah, it's a little bit intense at the moment. Yeah. Watching, I put BBC Breakfast on in the morning and uh, it's quite depressing. <laughs> But hopefully 2023, whatever it brings, is going to be better. I mean, we're still recovering from the whole COVID situation. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully it will be a better year. And happy Merry Christmas to you, Rob. Uh, Frederick Larson, uh, indeed a very me Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas. Cohen. They say it's especially important to say it to someone called Christmas Carol. Well, what would a Swede know? Question is, uh, is there no active search for a better garage? I suffer with you when I think of that leaky roof, lack of electricity, and general damp and coldness. The, the, hub the nuttering problem. shouldn't mean hub shuddering. Yeah. Especially because r washers and screws tend to fall all, fall all over the place. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the problem is that there isn't really a lot out there that's better. I mean, the, there are industrial units here in Aberystwyth and the same down in Cardigan, but you, you've literally seen how long it takes to get here because it's however long this video is. Yeah. Uh, and we don't really want to have something that far away the, it, it's amazing i mean the unit at the moment is only a few miles away but it, it's still you have to physically go up there and uh i think the dream scenario would be to live somewhere that actually had enough space for the cars yeah and but also the difficulty that's not easy to acquire when the, you're not particularly well off yeah the difficulty with upgrading for us is that we'd have to rejig the business so that the venue that we were storing in worked in other ways wouldn't we yeah yeah so but the i mean the dream for us obviously we shelved the house scenario but the the dream for us would be to have land we live in a static caravan quite happy with that and then have a big barn isn't it yeah that's 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 it that's bring everything together um is the way that we would do things uh thank you so much for 2022 you certainly make the YouTube a far better and more amusing place. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's very kind. Thank you, Frederick. Uh, Alan, Alan Williams, wishing you all a Merry Christmas. Would ask how much of a family car you personally think that Myrtle makes. Having owned a Chevrolet version, Matiz, found it too narrow and short for use. Now own a Fabio Estate and find it a more capable car. I do recall we actually went shopping, me, you and Minnie Hubnut with Myrtle once. Did we squash it? It's a good job we only had one child because we ended up having to use <laughs> most of the back seat for shopping. So, <laughs> yeah, as a family car, Myrtle's hopeless. But then, yeah. to be fair, so is this Fiat. This is even worse because it's only got two doors. Although the Hublets are quite taken with this, so that I don't think they'd care if they had mm. to sit with bags on their lap. <laughs> but yeah, Fabio State's nice. Mm. Very nice. John McCulloch, have you given any more thought to upgrading your garage or are such premises hard to find in, in Wales? A hoist would be lovely. Yeah, yeah, and that, that, is, that is the problem. Um, such buildings are not very common and the costs would go up yeah. enormously. What, what, what we've got now, it isn't perfect, but you know, the, the landlord's lovely, she leaves yeah, us alone she does. and uh, it is cheap. So yeah, it would be a, quite the financial commitment to take something on bigger I think yeah and as I say we'd have to 
consider how to change the business to bring in more yeah, revenue to yeah. cover just having that unit. And that all sounds a bit boring and business-like, doesn't it? Yeah. You might have to fire me and just get a unit. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. No, no, no. Oh, no. That I, was I would, not... I would hate to fire you. <laughs> you twit. <laughs> Visa Giza. Um, I wonder where he drives. Mm. <laughs> Best wishes to all the Hubnut family this Christmas. What And Merry Christmas to you, too. What would be the most useful tool-related Christmas present you could receive? Oh, tool-related. So we're just blue sky in it here, if you could have a... a yeah, the thing is, I've got loads of great tools. Most of them are now misplaced, but fluid transfer pumps are useful things. Well, Visa Giza has a very small list. I long for a ramp, inspection kit, uh, inspection pit and bigger space. Can you envision having these in the future? We'd uh, love to uh, have those in the future. Yeah, I've already had a pit. The problem with pits is they have a horrible habit of filling with water. <laughs> so the previous unit I was in had a pit and it was a health and safety nightmare. Didn't Whiteland have mushrooms in there? Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> so, yeah, pit, pits have their uses. I mean, the ultimate dream is to have a house on a hill where you drive in, but then you can enter the, under, the, the downstairs and move floor sections. I have seen properties like that and you're like, Oh my gosh, this is just beyond <laughs> perfect. Oh God. Literally building the house to fit the cars. Yeah. Fair enough. So, Nick D, a mystery benefactor offers to buy you a 1980s Eastern Block car. Ooh. Which one of the following three oh, cars three, just three. would you choose? FSO Polonaise, La Welcome. Lada Samara, Probably not, to or be honest. Skoda Rapid Coupe Ooh. rear engine. I know you've driven a Skoda Rapid back in 2015. Yeah, I do like the Skodas. Uh, sorry, um, so yeah. So your benefactor, F so Nick D, would you have an FSO Polonaise, a Lada Samara or Skoda Rapid Coupe rear engine? Uh, I would go Skoda Rapid, I think. Although, to be honest, I'd prefer an Estelle. Because um, getting at the engine bits, uh, the starter motor and whatnot, a lot easier in the Estelle because it actually has rear doors. And the batteries behind the rear seat as well, I seem to recall. So I have a feeling the one I drove came to visit once and broke ever so slightly. Hold up, just reversing, making sure I'm not reversing it into the charger. Ever so slightly. Yeah. So uh, we had to jump start it and you had to kind of get the cables in through the window to get to the battery. Oh, God. So impractical. That I'm sounds like say. fun. <laughs> we'll just have a quick pause while I connect up the charger. <sighs> right, we are connected and charging. We are going to be here for quite some time. 40 minutes, apparently, okay, to get the 80%. Okay, we'll have a coffee or something. Not a coffee, neither of us drink coffee. Yeah, hot drink. <laughs> okay, It's Me asks, Loving the channel, Ian. My daughter will be learning to drive next year. What small car would you recommend that is currently cheap and good for a learner? Uh, I was going to say City Bugs, but I think they're going out of production, but I'd still recommend one of those. I think so, a City Bug, because the thing is, the issue we have with, Chevy's a fantastic learner car, but is unobtainium, yeah. as we are seeing very, very much. But the city bugs. Yeah, Peugeot 107, Citroen C1, and all day. And the Igo, is, is the Igo the third? Has it become a 108? No. Has it? I don't know. Okay. Don't. But um, yeah, the thing with the city bugs is because there were so many of them, there are lots of them in scrapyards. So but I'm going to check you... a curveball in. Oh, go on. Citroen Berlingo. Because actually, they're big, they're boxy, they're surprisingly Which easy to place. Which one are you thinking, though? Are you thinking like M49 early, or are you thinking late Bellingo? I think any of the Bellingos. You think any Bellingo? Yeah, even though the later ones are bigger, they're still pretty easy to place. I mean, the mirrors are very and good. And I, I think there's a lot to be said, especially if you're learning to drive. Maybe a bigger car is better, because it offers better crash protection. I mean, and, the Bellingo uh, is a box yeah. at the end of the day. Even mm. the newer ones are a box. Um because that's the problem with the city book. I'm sat looking at a Peugeot 107 right at this moment and just looking at the, the rear end is mostly glass and the rear seats are right there. I love how you're baiting people with the things you can see. Yeah, I know. <laughs> normally, the I'd... Toyota events is over there. Normally, I'd be able to turn the camera, but we've got it on the, yeah. on the What's stand What's my phone at the on? Moment? 95%. Sorry, I'm going to pinch the charge cable for the um, camera, although I'm going to have to put the ignition back on, aren't I? No, I can do this. i got this. What this, about... This port. If I remember right, this stays live permanently. Sorry, hands. I hey, mean, there we go. Driving instructors, they're fans of the Corsa, aren't they? Yeah. Even now. Yeah, Cor Corsa yeah. is currently the best selling car in Britain, but Nissan Qashqai is about to take over. Oh, but is I it? think a Qashqai is a terrible car to learn to drive when you can't see out of them. No, they've got the small rear window, but, haven't they? Yeah. I don't think I've Our pair of driven Corsas seem to enjoy the experience. And it's a weird shape. Anyway, mm. um, 
Corsa go old school with a Fiesta. Yeah, yeah, Mark Seven mm-hmm. Fiestas I quite like. Yeah, I don't like Mark Six Fiestas. But if I think above of all of them, I think the City Bug is the best idea. Mm. Just because Have you lock my phone, do you? No, yes. <laughs> Um, because there's just availability, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Availability. It's small. Um, and, you, like, with R2, I don't really want them carrying friends and things right away. If yeah, just got, take the rear seat. So if you've got a, Australia does it right. In Australia, I don't... I think for the first year, you're not allowed to have passenger more than one passenger yeah. in your car once you've passed your test. And I think that's a great idea. So if you get something like a city bug... I don't know why I'm whispering. Oh, whispering. This teenager can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, then you'd be less inclined to mm. whack friends in there, hopefully. Yeah. Scottish car enthusiasts and trains TV. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. I love writing that on the merch. <laughs> yeah. We do, we do. Get, Hello, where's my pen out? <laughs> is there any road trips planned for 2023 or any new cars you may want to experience next year? Oh, experience. Loads. Uh, road trips mm. planned. No, it's vague ideas. Yeah. And I love vague ideas. No. I, <laughs> I, I would love to just go across the channel see where we end up no but we do need to sit and do a logistic we because learning from this year's experience we do need to sit and do a logistic session where we not specifics but say like okay so maybe once a week we need to be at xyz i hate it already <laughs> once a week you need to be at xyz place oh yeah yeah maybe apart from that you can run free in the hills as okay, you like thank you <laughs> um it's so johan Stevens. Oh, so I'm going to say car-wise, I am desperate to drive a Talbot Macho Rancho. Oh, Matt yeah. Matt Furious driving beat me to yeah. it. Yeah. Who? Oh, do we know anyone with that? Yeah, I do. Oh, it, okay. it, um Grand Thrift Auto, another channel he has one, although I don't think he's currently working on it, and it needs quite a lot of welding. Oh, okay. But okay. they are Yeah, they there. are cool. They mm. are really oh, cool. I'm very much mm. loving the orange decouvrable mm-hmm. that was at the NEC with a roll-up size. Yeah. Oh, Oh, uh, Mini Hubner was unaware of those until he watched your live. Yeah, there we go. He was like, what is that? Yeah. So I, I need to speak to clubs and people and actually do that because I, I love that people offer me cars to drive. I'm just sadly rubbish at getting around to doing them. The backlog's built up again. Mm. Um, but uh, I think I need to be a bit more proactive saying, okay, you know, I'm, I'm happy to drive all cars and film all cars, but there, there are some icons, some absolute loves of my life that I need to encounter and see whether they live up to expectation. Daihatsu YRV famously didn't. Yeah, that was sad. That, that's rare. But, mm. yeah. So I, think I was I, really sad There's a that. lot of Eastern mm. Bloc stuff I need to drive that I'm very keen to do next year. Two-stroke stuff, four-stroke stuff, all of it. Johan Shivens. I apologise if I butchered your, your last name there. It's cold indeed. Minus three degrees Celsius here in the Netherlands. Same as us here, funnily enough. Yeah, well, I think it's gone up to a balmy zero here in Aberystwyth. Uh, luckily, I have an Ellie hoodie to keep me warm. Oh, Glad to that. hear that. Talking about Ellie, I would like to see more of her. How is she performing in this cold weather? Is a 2CV doable in this weather? Uh, well, she isn't performing in this weather because they're throwing so much salt around mm. and Ellie's already a little crispy in places. It's not sensible to get her out. Um, as for what it's like to drive a 2CV... It isn't as warm as a modern car, but you can make them quite snug. A good yeah, trick on a 2CV, use yeah. the grill blind or muff uh, to uh, restrict the airflow into the engine bay. That makes the engine hotter, it makes the heater hotter. And uh, if you block off under the front seats, it tends to keep you much more cosy in front. It's rubbish for people in the back, but we don't very often go out as a family in Italy. No, Lap no. Melts just not really but she would be fine in this weather wouldn't she she could happily bobble along yeah yeah Yeah. in a way they're better because you've got no water cooling to worry Mm. about air cooling is brilliant in this weather and tends to start generating heat quite quickly Mm -hmm. so he says i want to buy a 2cb in the very near future do so it is compulsory greetings from the netherlands hello the netherlands so the matt brown bill looking at getting a blingo oh Excellent choice. We are influencers. In the new year, petrol or diesel? I do around 150 miles a week. Wait for it. Two litre HDI. Um, well, this, this is it. I mean, the, the diesel's great, but if you're not doing towing, it's not essential. It's not the only way to no. do it. And you as, were... as the price between diesel and petrol has grown mm. since prices went up, prices went up to a hideous high and petrol seemed to be just as expensive as diesel, but petrol has come down much more quickly. Yeah, and you were dismissive of the 1.6, but 
But we've spent a lot more time around Berlingos now. Yeah. And there are lots jo- of people who are peak... quite happily running along. No, I was the dismissive 6. for the 1.4. No, you did 1.6 as well. You said anything but the 2 litre HDI. No, it's because there's a 1.6 HDI, which is probably best avoided because they grenade themselves. You definitely the one... said No, that. no, no. The 1.6 <laughs> special. John, John has got one at Peak 2 CV. He absolutely loves it. I think the 1.6 mm. is a good compromise. They did briefly do a 1.8 petrol as well. And uh, I, I would expect either of those to easily get sort of 35, maybe even 40 to the gallon on a run. So is the diesel really doing that much more? Well, I mean, we've touched 60 mpg in Bella, yeah, but have. that is quite unusual, really. It tends yeah, to be more... Yeah, she tends to be 40... 45, 50. If she's towing 43 and yeah. she tends to be 40, yeah, 50, 50? Yeah, low 50s tends mm. to be where it is. But yeah. that's on a more expensive fuel... And then you've got the issues of, you know, turbos can still knock themselves out and um, diesels can be a bit more maintenance heavy. Mm-hmm. So a lot to be said for the petrols. Yeah, but congratulations on your forthcoming Berlingo ownership. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're doing 150 miles a week, they're really comfortable. Like, they're yeah. weirdly comfortable, aren't they? Yeah, it's a lovely driving position. And it does everything you need. Like, yeah. if you need a van, it's it's a van. Yeah, it's we've been a using Bella hauler. heavily as a van this week. Yes, yeah, she has been, bless her. Yeah. Cotton socks. <laughs> so mike broom asks do you think all season tires are adequate for use in the uk does any of your fleet have winter tires and if so are you selective in which vehicles you use this time of year well we are selective it tends to be the more modern stuff because the modern stuff is better protected against rot from the factory although that's not necessarily the case with betty because mm. australia they don't grit um yeah, tyres is a tricky one. Um, I've, I've used all seasons. I think Myrtle has a pair of all seasons on the front at the moment. Nothing else does and nothing is on Shemi winters. Shemi had... But I have uh, I've felt a definite benefit with winter tyres in the winter. All seasons, by their nature, are a bit more of a compromise. Mm. But I would rather have all seasons and summer tyres. Yeah. I mean, should this weather continue, I think you would look to put Bella on. Yeah, definitely. Because she's... Probably I'm yeah, and, and when it comes to a new pair of tyres for that car, I may well go all season, mm-hmm. just just for a bit more. It just swings to compromise. You probably get a little bit more tyre wear, but you're better protected. And mm. a tyre that's good in winter is going to be good in heavy rain as well, I should think. Yeah. So are we selective in the vehicle we use? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the moderns. And it's not because we're wussies and we just like the better heaters. It's <laughs> cause Although that is a thing. Might, no, it's not, a thing. it's not a thing. It is well, just... The protection against salt. Mm. So, Robert Brink. Hi, Robert. Hello. And Netherlands um, again. Yeah. Chilly weather inspired question. Which of the cars you currently have and have driven in the past has the best heater and which has the worst? This thing has an amazing heater. And this heater's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I don't bother scraping this because uh, just get in, turn the heater on. Woof. Yeah. The big thing with the big win with this is. The ease of traveling in it it's just warm yeah. when you need it to be warm it, it heats up so quickly because it's just a resistance heater so mm-hmm. um yeah it sacrifices a bit of range but it heats up so and quickly the whereas worst? whereas the bilingo is terrible do you know i would argue with betty's heater her air conditioning yeah is fantastic but heating yeah it's really she weird seems to let a lot of cold in but, but you you up. also have to set it to unrealistic temperatures like 26 27 yeah. degrees to yeah. get any heat yeah. out of it you think oh we'll set it to 20 and it will make it 20 degrees it never seems to no, per- no. perhaps they just didn't test them in such and you've got all conditions. the beds tipped away from you and turned off and everything yeah. so she can't possibly let any cold in and um i mean technically tuck's got the worst heater because uh the pipe that should go from the back over to the front and do the windscreen uh, has broken off so it's just right behind me so it keeps your left ear quite warm and that's excellent it. that's what you need in life yeah, yeah. a warm left ear yeah and uh, robert says wishing you and your family a very merry christmas and all merry the best christmas. for 2023 robert have you got a learner driver at the minute i feel like you do Ooh. yeah so twitter discussions again folks yeah terribus 13 hope you miss hubnuts and the hublets and the hubmuts are all doing well in this chilly weather uh titch doesn't go out no <laughs> she does not like this no not a fan of the cold. No. Um, and nor am I, to be honest. It's freezing. No, it is very, very cold. But no, we are very well. We're all ready for Christmas and everything. Mm. So, um, yes. Do you ever get any George the Cat updates these days? I do miss his cameos on the channel. Yeah, not so many, sadly. Yeah. Slightly lost touch with George the mm. Cat. Sadly, we think that we may be coming to the end of our journey with Titch. Yeah. Um, 
So that's kind of the yeah. focus at the moment. Although we, we say that, I've actually gone to the vet and got the drugs to sedate her, to take her in to say goodbye. And now she seems... She's good up. She's perked up. So <laughs> thankfully those drugs have a long shelf life. So yeah, yeah. We should um, keep them to hand. But. Yeah, she really has. She was so busy yesterday. Yeah, we even told the kids, Madden. had all the upsetting conversations yeah. and now she's perked up again. <laughs> Carriers. Yeah. But um, when we said that, oh, you know, the end is near and everything... Miss Hubnut, little Miss Hubnut's first thought was, so uh, we can have a cat now, yes? <laughs> yeah, no. There are, there are occasionally cameos from the farm cats where the cars are. Yeah, so. and also chickens. <laughs> yeah, chickens, sheep, all sorts. Yes. Goats. The goats didn't last long, thankfully. They're rather <laughs> invasive. <laughs> um, but yeah, so maybe, you never know, there might be another hub cat at some point. Who knows? Yes. Frank Wolfius says... Which car would you buy if you won £2,500 today? Oh, two and a half grand. You don't get so much for two and a half grand these days, do you? No. What I, mean, I mean, an extra grand on top of that, and I'd have been close to being able to afford that. That bomb bug. Zastava. Oh, the Zastava. Yeah. I Sorry, I'm saying. trying to correct myself. I know all you um, Serbo-Croats and um, folk in that sort of area were saying it's not Zastava. How is it? Zastava. Zastava, okay. So um, hopefully that counts as a correction. <laughs> that car, I believe, has been sold to someone in New York. Oh, wow. Which is um, unexpected. What did the uh, Fox go for in the end, you know? Uh, Fox went for 480 I think. What, 4000 No. 480 480 Oh. It was a project, firmly a project. Oh, bless. I think that Yaris Hybrid might have been wanting to jump on the electric. Tough, we're already here. <laughs> and we've still got 28, 28 minutes, minutes to go. Minutes to go. Yep, yeah, next. Um, okay, okay. Um, do, 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 do. Tony Smith. Hello, Tony. Hope you're all well. Do you have any plans to add any more cars to the fleet anytime in the new year? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> we've got to fix. We've Tony. got to fix. No, I haven't got any plans. Not plans, no, but I can't see you going through a year without a purchase. No, no, I'm, I'm deter I came <laughs> so close this year and then it all went a bit wrong. But I started well. And uh, it wasn't until May we bought the Bolingo. Mm. And but then we the, Bolingo the, was, Bolingo. the Bolingo was going to be the only vehicular purchase, ignoring Bob. Bob is different, um, of the year. Mm. And uh, and then I got offered Miss Daisy. Miss Daisy. Yeah. And crumbled I immediately. I think what we might do in the forthcoming year um, is look to f buy and flip a car. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. 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 I think. If anything is um, incoming, unless it was something exceptional, anything that's incoming soon would be something that's not staying. Yeah. So. Which I guarantee I'll fall in love with and not want to sell. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But I think that's what purchases would look like. Yeah. Because I, I do get offered a lot of cars at the moment. I'm just sort of going blanket. No, I just don't want any more cars. Mm. But, <laughs> but yeah. meanwhile, many have going... Oh my God, what do you mean you said no? Oh yeah. my God, what do you mean yeah. you said no? Yeah. <laughs> and also, have there been any updates on the Mighty Datcher? Uh, Mighty Datcher, someone managed to spot it um, fairly recently. Um, I don't think it's been used much for the same reason I'm not using my older cars, but uh, it was spotted in um, a Shropshire town oh. fairly recently. So it, it's up and about. And uh, well, she was MOT, yeah, wasn't she? Well, well overdue a catch up, but you know, Rich lives a fair old trek away from mm. here, uh, so yeah, he, he did get get it all done, got it MOT'd. Happy days, it wasn't MOT'd when he wanted it to be MOT'd, no, because he wanted it for, for the unexceptional, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did fail that test, but uh, I think rear brake lines, but uh, I believe that's all been addressed. Fantastic, Julian Knight. Hello to you all. Hello, have you purchased a car from eBay? Yes. Quite a few. What have you purchased? Pro probably not as many actually thinking about it. Um, I'm trying to think, the last one, last one, but well, the, the Fiat Multipler was an eBay purchase, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that wasn't great. Uh, I bought a Ford Maverick that appeared to have no brake pads left in it at all and a seized caliper. Superb. Uh, so that one wasn't great. Um, what else? I don't think any of the cars on the fleet currently came through eBay. I suppose technically Took did. It was a really bad listing. There's one photo of Took and it just said 100 quid and it just said load of Invercars for sale. And that was kind of the entirety of the ad. Yeah. And it turned out there were 14 of them and they were all 100 quid each. Wow. So I, I wish I'd bought more of them, but never mind. I don't tend to go on eBay because um, 
I'd find eBay's a bit of a waste of time for buyers and sellers. Yeah, um, it's a tough one, isn't it, eBay? Yeah, because we we had the excitement of looking at some bilingos mm. on eBay. We even had a, a bit of a bid and a flutter. We did, we did. But I uh, just went beyond our budget. I think eBay was amazing when the internet was younger, mm. but there are many other sites that do it better. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of auction sites out there. Car and Classic is one of them. Mm. Uh, so, Mine yeah, knows and, it. and a lot of the classic auction houses went to Bright Hills Wells recently. They mm. do their auctions all online now, and it's much the same format. Here's the year-end date, bid until that point mm. in time. And even, you know, for people that would, prob- would probably have used eBay historically, Facebook Marketplace, they just have to take two minutes to stick the car oh, up there. Gosh, oh, gosh. Oh, I know, it's don't awful. Try, don't try selling a car on Facebook Marketplace. It's appalling. <laughs> Time waste essential. It makes eBay look like a paragon <laughs> of virtue. Right, next. Uh, no, wait. And oh. he says, and just for fun, do you think you would be together if Ian Steele had long hair? Weirdly, his haircut was the reason that we got talking, wasn't mm. it? So who knows? But, you know, I'm a firm believer in fate. So if our paths were deemed to have crossed, they would have crossed. Yeah. So You've certainly got nothing along against long hair because your well, son has very long does. hair. He does. He has moment. very long hair. Yeah. I love his beauty. His hair is ridiculously beautiful, that child. Mm. Ridiculously beautiful. Right, moving on. Come on, we, yes. we need to be okay. barreling through these a bit more. Well, no, we're here for freaking ages. That's true. But do people want to watch for ages? I don't know. Are you still here? <laughs> yes. Excellent. Have you paused and got a cup of tea yet? You really should. I'd do that. I mean, I know somewhere you can buy lovely mugs. They're perfect for a hub. Oh, yes. Mm. Mugs. Yeah, what? Triangle of Doom mugs have been flying out recently, yeah. haven't they? Two sizes of mugs, no less. Two sizes. Mm. Two colours. Mm. In fact, we're running out of the whites again, I think. No. Are we not? Have we got another box hidden somewhere? No, actually, yes, we are running out of the white yeah. ones. We've got a lot of power, less is more. Yes, buy those instead. <laughs> so, Scott Fisher. Can you fit Saxo VTR alloys on Bella for improved grip in the corners, or is the offset different? I believe they're a straight fitment. Um, I f- think so. I think there's a How lot of Pergo um, Citroen stuff that's got... Haven't you got Saxo setup. hubcaps on currently, Bella? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. wheel trims, yeah. It was funny because people were like, where did you get those when we were at the Bilingo meet? And I was like, they're all for Saxo. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there's a, a lot of options, but I can't say I have a massive desire for extra grip in that car. And I think you can no, achieve... she's pretty good, is You she? can achieve more with just getting better tyres than mm. necessarily going, oh, mm. right, I'll fit some bigger wheels. Alloy wheels don't make any difference to your handling at all, I'm going to say it. And it says, also, can you give my stepdaughter, Rihanna, a shout-out, please? Hello. Hello, Rihanna. We owe someone else a shout-out as well, Michael Clifton. Uh, no, no, um, things are a little tough at the moment, but um, your, your other half sent us a lovely message, so we hope you're all well. Full well one. What are you doing to relax over the festive season? Uh, I feel like full well one. Are, are you I'm relaxing? You. Over the festive you, season? You're not very good at relaxing, because right? all you want to do is feed me. <laughs> yeah, but also... We're going to have a quiet Christmas, just the two of us, and uh, I just know I'll come downstairs and it'll look like you're feeding 20 people, and I'll be like, I'm going to die. Well, It's all well, very delicious. That is the problem. Yeah. Um, Christmas, I'm sure, for those of you that are parents, can appreciate, is not a relaxing time for parents, mm. um, because when you grow up, you realise that all the magic that happened was your parents or whoever your guardian was at that point in time, made that happen. Mm. So that's why they might be a bit tired and a bit grumpy. But this year, it's just Mr. Hubnut and I for actual Christmas, isn't it? Mm. So And the dogs. We're pairing things down with regards to Christmas dinner. <laughs> she says. Um, I'm going to buy frozen veg- pre-prepared vegetables. Ooh. I've never done that in my life. So we're going to do that. But yeah, we that should mean we have a good few days we got the chest freezer now, so we've got enough yeah. food to feed an army. But the merch store will be offline for a few yeah. days. and We can we can just hold down. I'm afraid for... I haven't actually got all that much video content lined up. I should be clever. Like Mighty Car Mods have got their Christmas movie lined oh, up. Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll be watching that. Yeah. We'll be watching that. We'll, we'll be watching that. We'll, so yeah. we we'll genuinely, gen, genuinely have a few days mm. off. I mean. But, yeah, it's just uh, it's a bit intense with parenting at the moment because we've got um little miss hubnut is going through gcse mocks mm. uh i'm sure other parents are finding that there seems to be a lot of assessments and exams more than there usually is at the moment because everybody's trying to catch up to get the kids ready for gccs and whatnot um so it's been a bit t- intense hasn't it it has so, so a few days yeah. break is is definitely going to happen yeah 
looking forward to it. So am I. And just, yeah, it's going to be lovely. Mm. So what are Watch we... Watch rubbish telly and um, eat too much food. What do we do? Pretty much nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, Paul Birch, are you planning on moving units? I think we've kind of covered yeah, that. Yeah, alas, not for the time being. Yeah, I'm, I, I keep an eye out, but it's not like I'm actively hunting for something better because mm. I think the chances of finding something better are pretty slim. I think we were quite yeah. lucky to find what we've got. Yeah, we, it, we it were very perfect, lucky. Really that was cheap. that was almost fated, wasn't it? It yeah. just popped up on Facebook. Yeah. And like you say, our landlady's lovely. She just lets us get on with it. And, you know, and we have been naughty and put cars outside and whatnot yeah. before. Yeah, we, we only finally got to the stage where there are no cars outside <laughs> now. Yeah, so we're annoying our neighbours instead of her. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sorry, well, neighbors. yeah, well, thank you very much, everyone. That was a good load of questions. Uh, oh, we may so tack on a few fun. more. Um, we'll, we'll see how we go, but this is already looking pretty long, I think. Yes. So, yeah, thank you very much for um, being a part of it. Mm. And we're hoping to do a live before. Yeah, we'll try and do it. Yeah, maybe we'll do a live at Christmas. Who knows? Well, actually, Christmas Day. Not Christmas Day. No. no. But maybe maybe in, in the tween. Yeah. Or before we're in the I tween. Or oh, in the excitement of Christmas, lead up. Okay. We'll do something. Anyway. <laughs> We're going to do something. Yeah. So thank you for your support. Um, don't forget, um, you can ask questions as well if you become a channel member or a Patreon, uh, a patron, sorry. Um, but it isn't compulsory. We shall see you wherever and whenever. So thank you very much. Yeah, stay safe, everybody. I hope you're all keeping warm. And um, I know it's going to be a difficult time of year for some people. So I hope you're okay. Um, and there are some good, lovely communities out there that can Exactly. Weird Car Twitter is an amazing place. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Enjoy, and uh, we'll see you uh, fairly soon. Na dolly clawen. Na dolly clawen, a blwyddyn newydd